Hi friends, welcome to the first episode of ArtReach at Home. I'm Miss Jen, ArtReach Orlando's curriculum director and lead teaching artist. ArtReach is a nonprofit organization that provides free visual art education to communities all around Central Florida. We normally serve over 100 students a week, but because we are all currently practicing social distancing and staying home, we've decided to try something new. We've created this video series to share our curriculum with children and their families to help them explore the creative process, practice mindfulness, and most importantly, stay connected while staying home. I just want to take a moment to say hello to any of my students and their families that might be watching. I miss you all so much, and I think about you every day. And to any new friends watching, welcome. I'm so happy you can join us. Please remember that you're not alone and that we'll all get through this together. I hope these videos will bring a spark of joy and wonder to your day. So, did you all notice the colorful and beautiful necklace that I'm wearing? What material do you think this necklace is made out of? That's right, it is made out of yarn using a process called finger knitting. Now, finger knitting is one of my favorite creative expression activities, and it's also a great way to practice mindfulness. Now, parents, caregivers, and teachers at home might be wondering, what are the benefits of practicing mindfulness and finger knitting? So mindfulness is a powerful tool for developing self-awareness, empathy, calm, and focus. And with distance learning, I'm sure we could all use a little extra help with mindfulness. So finger knitting teaches concentration, control, coordination, and it's just a lot of fun. It also involves sensory input and fine motor development. The repetitive motion of finger knitting is calming and the feel of the yarn can be soothing for children. And of course, they feel really proud of that they've created something by themselves. This video series is intended for ages six and older, but I've taught finger knitting to children as young as four and to adults of all ages. So anyone at home can finger knit along to this video. Okay, who's ready to finally learn how to finger knit? Let's get started. To begin finger knitting, we're going to need a few materials scissors, and your favorite color of yarn. Okay, now that we've gotten our materials together, we can get started learning how to finger knit. So you're gonna need that pair of scissors and some yarn. I chose this really pretty warm color. What color did you choose? So to get started, the first thing we need to do is take this loose yarn and form it into a small ball. Maybe you have a big long roll of yarn at home. You're going to want to cut some of that yarn off like I have, and now we're going to roll it up into a small ball. So the first thing that we're going to do is find a loose end of the yarn, and then I'm going to pinch it between my thumb and my pointer finger like this. And then I'm carefully going to use my other hand to begin wrapping it around two of my fingers. And I'm just gonna continue to do this until it begins to form a ball shape. Now, it's important that you don't wrap it on your fingers too tightly so that you don't hurt yourself or cut off your circulation. So I'm just gonna wrap. You can see how I'm holding it with my other hand, right? And really the two fingers are moving and I let it guide through my other hand. My other hand is guiding it and letting it slide through to wrap around my fingers. So once I roll it up and it starts getting kind of a round shape, I can carefully slide this off of my two fingers and then make sure that I'm pinching this together with my hand. And then I can take my yarn and begin wrapping it through the center to hold all of that together. And this is gonna help me form my ball. So I'm just gonna keep wrapping until it grows into a nice round ball shape. Now, after I go one direction for a while, I might rotate it and then go back the other way again. You can see it's getting rounder. All right, almost done making our ball. 
There we go. Now we have a nice round ball shape. Now I'm not gonna need my scissors for a little while, so I'm gonna move those out of the way just so I have more workspace. Now, when we're first learning to finger knit, it's a good idea to have a workstation, some kind of a flat surface or a table or a desk to be able to lay our yarn on and kind of keep our hand at. Now, once you learn to finger knit, one of the great things is that you can really finger knit anywhere. You can finger knit while sitting on the couch or laying in bed or sitting on the floor. Um, if you have a backyard, you could sit outside while finger knitting. So it's pretty cool that you can kind of do it anywhere. So to get started, we're going to look at our hands. So one hand is going to be controlling and manipulating, weaving the yarn or, or knitting the yarn onto our other hand. So I'm left-handed and I like to use my left hand, the one that I write with, because it feels like I have better control to manipulate that yarn. And I like to put it then on my right hand. Now, maybe you're right-handed, and that means you're gonna hold the yarn in your right hand and weave or knit it onto your left hand. Now, since I am a left-handed teacher, I'm gonna give you the left-handed directions, but don't worry. They're very easy to transfer to your right hand to weave onto your left. I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. So while you're finger knitting, you're gonna be holding, again, our yarn in our dominant hand, and you're gonna be weaving or knitting it onto your non-dominant hand. Now the hand that you're gonna be knitting it onto needs to be facing up. So this is the top of my hand. I need, you need to make sure that you're looking down at the top of your hand. The top of your hand is up. So this is the top of your hand, and this is the back of your hand or the palm of your hand. Now, if you're a younger friend, it can be sometimes hard to remember what's the top and what's the back or what's the front and what's the palm of your hand, right? So you could use a washable non-permanent marker to maybe draw a little star on the top of your hand or a little heart to help you remember. Or if you wanna get really weird and creative, you could do what I did, which is to make a little friend. Hello there, everybody to help me remember that this is the top of my hand. So I used a washable marker to make some eyes right here at the bottom of my pointer finger. And when I tuck my thumb into my hand and make a fist, it turns into a little friend. Hello. So this way I'll remember that the top of my hand is the side with two little eyes. All right. So go ahead and maybe think about marking your hands or making a little friend to help you remember. Everybody got that? All right, I think we're ready to get started. Okay, so let's get started. Remember that you need to make sure that you're looking down at the top of your hand. Now I'm gonna be naming our fingers while I'm giving directions. So let's just review the names of all of our fingers. So we have our thumb, our pointer finger, our middle finger, our ring finger, and your pinky. So that's important just to make sure you know the names of each of your fingers because I'm gonna be using them to give you directions. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do to get started is pick up that little kitten tail. Okay, so I'm gonna hold my kitten tail I'm going to kind of pinch it between my pointer finger and my thumb on my dominant hand, the one that I'm using to knit or weave. And I'm going to come behind my other hand and I'm going to put the little kitten tail between my pointer finger and my middle finger, just like this. And I like to pull the yarn down so that it touches my wrist. I'll show you that one more time. I took the yarn and I moved it behind my hand and I placed it between my pointer finger and my middle finger like this and then I let it come down to touch my wrist. Now what would that look like on your other hand? I'll show you really quickly in case I have some right-handed friends watching along at home. So same thing it's still your pointer finger and your ring finger you're going to come behind your hand 
pull your little cattail down in between those two and let it touch your wrist just like that. All right, go ahead and make sure that the yarn is between your pointer finger and your middle finger like mine, that the cattail or kitten's tail is touching your wrist. All right, great job. We're ready to get started. So I'm gonna loosen my ball just a little bit because sometimes that makes it a little easier to get started. And now <clears throat> we're not going to touch this kitten tail at all for a while. We're only gonna be using the little ball of yarn that we made to knit with. So this first step um, is sometimes called casting on. We're gonna cast on to our hands. So to get started, I'm gonna pick up the yarn right? That's behind my hand. And I'm going to pull it towards my thumb. But we're not going to use our thumb to knit with. We're only going to use these four fingers. So I'm going to take the yarn in the back and I'm going to go over top of my pointer finger. Then I'm going to go underneath of my middle finger and then over top of my ring finger and then underneath my pinky finger. And I'm gonna let the yarn just lay like that so you can see. So if you did it correctly, you should have the kitten tail still hanging down in the front, touching your wrist. You've got a loop now over your pointer finger and a loop over your ring finger. Do you wanna see it one more time? Okay, no problem. So I'll show you one more time. Tail's hanging down. I picked up the yarn in the back of my hand, I pulled it towards my thumb, and then I wrapped it over my pointer finger, I went under my middle finger, and then I went over my ring finger, under my pinky, and down. So you should have two loops, two fingers that have loops and two fingers that do not. Now we want to get two of these loops on each of these fingers. So we're going to continue with this pattern of going over and under and over and under our fingers. All right, let's try the next step. So for the next step, I'm going to pick up the yarn that's over here by my pinky. And this is tricky. I always feel like the pinky is the hardest finger, but I'm going to take this yarn and I'm going to go over and around my pinky under my ring finger, over my middle finger, and then under my pointer finger. Now, if you did that correctly, you should now have one loop on each of your fingers. Take a look and make sure you have that one loop on each of your fingers. Do you want to see that one more time? Okay. So, for the next step, we went, we took the yarn and it went over our pinky, under our ring finger, over our middle finger, and under our ring finger, I'm sorry, under our pointer finger. So if you did that correctly, remember you're gonna have one loop on each finger. But I said earlier that we wanna have two loops on each finger. So we have to do the pattern one more time. So remember, we're gonna pick up the yarn in the back, pull it towards our thumb, and now wrap it over our pointer finger, under our middle finger, over our ring finger, and under our pinky. I'll give you a moment to get caught up. So now we have two fingers that have two loops, our pointer finger and our ring finger, and two fingers that have one loop, our middle finger and our pinky. All right, so we're almost there. Let's finish this pattern. So I'm gonna pick up the yarn again. Sorry, my arm's getting in the way, I'll turn my hands. I'm gonna wrap it around and go over my pinky, under my ring finger, over my middle finger. And look at that, under my pointer finger. We did it, friends. We now have two loops on each finger. Did you get that right? Two loops on each finger finger. Good job. Now I'm going to kind of slide all my loops down on my hands a little bit, especially if you have a short pinky finger, that yarn likes to slide off. So I'm going to scoot my loops down. So finger knitting is just completing patterns. That was our first set of patterns that we had to complete, that over under, over under motion. 
So our next pattern is the actual knitting part, which we do by grabbing the yarn, one of the loops on one of our fingers. I'm gonna hold it and I'm gonna kind of pull it gently and I'm gonna pull it gently and I'm gonna pull it over top of the top loop and I'm gonna bend my finger to slide the bottom loop off my finger. Then, oh, look what's gonna happen now. I'm gonna give that cattail a little tug. Now we might have to touch the cat's tail. So I'll show you that again now on the next finger. I'm gonna pinch and grab the bottom loop. I'm gonna pull it gently. I'm gonna lift it and pull it over top of the top loop and then slide it off my finger. I bend my finger to help slide it off. And then I'm gonna pull these loops down and I'm gonna pull my little cattail. Let's do it on the last two. I pull the loop, I pull it up over the top loop, I bend my finger and slide it off. All right, nice job. We've got one finger left. I'm gonna pull the bottom loop, slide it over the top loop and off of my finger. And then I'm gonna pull this one down to make sure it stays. And I'm gonna give the cattail just a little tug. All right, great job, friends. So now we're back to having one loop on each finger. Your finger knitting is going to be growing on the back of your hand. Now, if you look at it right now, it doesn't really look like much, but it's going to start growing and forming on the back of your hand. But we want to make sure that we're always looking at the top of your hand. Are you remembering? I'm remembering. Great job, friends. So now we can keep completing this pattern of under, over, under, over, bottom over top, bottom over top. So let's try it again. So we're gonna keep going with our under over pattern. I'm gonna pull the yarn towards my pinky. I'm sorry, I'm gonna pull the yarn towards my thumb and then I'm gonna wrap it over my pointer finger, under my middle finger, over my ring finger and under my pinky. And then I'm gonna wrap it over my pinky, under my ring finger, over my middle finger. And then because I have two loops on each finger, I can just let the yarn go and lay it down. All right, so now we know the next part of the pattern is what? Bottom over top. That's right, we're gonna do bottom over top again for each of our loops. So I'm gonna take the bottom loop, pull it over the top loop and slide it off my finger. And the more you do this, the easier it's gonna get. There we go. And I've completed my pattern. And I'm gonna do it again towards my thumb, over my pointer, under my middle, over my ring, under my pinky, and then around and over my pinky, under my ring finger, over my middle, and then I've got two loops on each so I can just lay the yarn down and then remember bottom over top, bottom over top, bottom over top, bottom over top. Now, if you accidentally take both of the loops off of one of your fingers, don't worry. We kind of call that dropping a stitch. It really won't affect your finger knitting too much when you're finished. You might see a little loose piece dangling, but that's okay. So now you can see it's starting to grow on the back of my hands. Now it's time to move this little cat tail to the back of my hand. So to do that, I'm going to flip my hand over and I'm just going to look and find the cat tail and pull it out. So now the cat tail is on the back of my hand and I'm going to give it a little tug. And Every once in a while I'll do that because it's going to keep my finger knitting nice and tight. So before we keep finger knitting, let's talk about some of the things that you can turn your finger knitting into. Now, in the beginning of the video, you saw that I was wearing my finger knitting as a necklace. So that's one thing you could do with your finger knitting. You could also turn it into a bracelet or a headband. I've had students use their finger knitting um, to make a strap for a bag. I've had students turn their finger knitting into a banner. Maybe you wanna hang the finger knitting up somewhere in your house and then hang a sign from it with maybe a positive or encouraging message for someone in your family. 
You could see how long you could make your finger knitting. Can you make finger knitting that goes from one side of your house to the other? There are so many different possibilities. You could turn your finger knitting into a different animal. It kind of already looks a little bit like a snake, don't you think? So there's lots of fun ways that you can use your finger knitting. So let's keep going and working on our pattern a little bit more. So again, remember, pull towards my thumb. I'm gonna go over the pointer finger, under the middle, over the ring, under the pinky, and then wrap around and go over the pinky, under the ring, over the middle, two loops on each hand so I can put it down, and then bottom over top, bottom over top, bottom over top, bottom over top. All right, so I'm gonna work on my finger knitting for a little while and get a nice long piece so I can show you what you can do if you run out of yarn and wanna add more to it to keep finger knitting on the same piece. And I'll show you when you're completely done finger knitting, how to tie off your finger knitting so that it doesn't come unraveled. That's a very important step to learn. All right, let's all take a minute to practice our finger knitting and I'll see you back in a couple of seconds. Okay, so I worked on my finger knitting and I've got a nice long piece here. How do you think I did? You did a great job. Thank you, friends. All right, so now I'm going to show you, let's say you're finished and you're all done with your finger knitting. What do we do now? So if you were to run out of yarn, let's say I had used all of this warm colored yarn up and there wasn't any left and I was all finished. So we'll cut this so I can show you. And I just had this little bit left at the end. Now you could finish, I could tie this off, which I'll show you in a moment. Or let's say you wanted to keep working. You still had more yarn left. Well, you could make another ball of yarn, roll it up the same way we did for this one, and then take the two tails and you can tie them together or maybe ask a grown up to help you tie them together. You wanna tie them in a knot so they stay and pull that knot nice and tight. And then I like to cut off the little ends. I don't like to see them dangling like that. So now that's nice and tied together and I could keep finger knitting. Okay, but I think I'm done. I think this is a nice length for today. So if you're all finished with your finger knitting, you do wanna go ahead and cut it. I like to leave a tail um, with my finger knitting because, you know, I might wanna turn it into a necklace or a bracelet and then I'm gonna to need to be able to tie it to the other end of my finger knitting in order to do that, right? So you've got your little tail. Now to tie off your finger knitting, what we're gonna do very carefully is slide each of these loops. I'm not gonna let go. I'm gonna slide it, look, onto my thumb on my other hand. I'm gonna slide that one onto my thumb, slide this one. Oh, and then watch out with that pinky because it's always tricky. Okay, so now I've got all of the loops together on my thumb. I'm gonna kind of pinch them and hold them open. Can you see how that's open now? There we go, we can kind of see through it, right? I'm gonna take my little cattail and I'm gonna poke it through all of the loops and pull it out the back and then when I pull this, it just automatically knots the finger knitting. So look at that. Now it's one nice textile that we've created using our hand to finger knit. Isn't that awesome? You did a great job. If you enjoyed watching this video to learn how to finger knit, we would love to see your creation. You could take a photo of your finger knitting and share it in the comment section on this video. Or tag us in a post on social media. And be sure to visit our website to sign up for our newsletter and learn how you can help us in our mission to transform the lives of youth through the healing process of art. 
Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. No, Riley, that's that's not how you finger net, Riley. Riley, that's not how you finger net.